Hi, I'm Derek Spratt. I made uh, these Altic 604 speakers in 2016. They're nine cubic foot uh, internal volume cabinets um, with the Great Plains Audio version, the 604-8H Mark III, the latest version, which has got improvements to the uh, horn, the dispersion characteristics, some improvements to the driver characteristics, uh, the high frequency and the low frequency driver is including power handling capability. So it's the original design from 1943 that's been continuously upgraded to the present day and um, it uh, has custom crossovers from Rick Craig who owns and runs a custom speaker manufacturing business called Sahali Audio uh, and uh, it's um, the voicing of the crossovers is improving the mid-range uh, between the 1500 hertz crossover frequency point. Uh, he's improved the voicing, the mid-range sounds smoother. And um, generally speaking, it's just that the speakers sound a little bit more neutral and natural than they are with the stock Alta crossovers. Um, I've got a video after this where when I put these together, I shot quite a bit of video during the construction of them so you can see inside you can see all the bracing and the panels that are used to break up standing waves so there's angled panels um, it's using a uh, the cabinets are using a high grade um, wall not wall uh, maple finish and they have been um, you know the the surface I guess the staining and the uh, of the surface is um, for me in Canadian dollars it was four thousand six hundred dollars just to build the cabinets and then the drivers themselves are, are, are 1800 US dollars each and then the crossovers were another uh, $500. So there's quite a bit invested in these uh, speakers. Um, they're quite neutral sounding um, in the larger cabinets with the correct amount of damping and the standing wave uh, correction panels. Um, they're very, they're very clean sounding, and the, the main reason for having these in my life has been to recreate what um, all the classic albums in the late 60s through to the 1980s, basically 70 plus percent of the studios would have run these speakers. So if you want to listen to um, any of that classic album period um, and hear what the studio engineers and the musicians were trying to achieve, and wanted you to hear this is this is the way to do it here. Um, they're obviously incredibly efficient speakers, so they um, even at 100 decibels, they take less than a one one watt of power to to drive them at, at high volume levels. So I've been running them with this Japanese uh, triode amp. Um, it's uh, this 300B triode. Um, it's you know, an eight watt per channel amplifier that is capable of making them go as loud as you possibly want, but I never push them past the one watt level. I usually listen at around 93 to 95 decibels of sound pressure level. And I also run a, a small subwoofer. And the reason is I can take this little controller here and I can sit there while I'm listening and literally by the track, by the song I'm listening to, I can change the, the amount of bass response. So if I want something really punchy and hard hitting, um, I can play with it. It's like my loudness control for the bass. Um, I'm also sitting fairly close to these speakers, kind of in the middle of my room. Um, so it's not the optimum bass response in the middle of the room, uh, but I, and I can adjust for that dynamically with the sub. But if I move my listening position back another two feet, then the speakers by themselves obviously proves more than enough low frequency response. Um, when you build a speaker like this, you can play with the amount of damping. Um, so I've got the thing, you know, fairly well damped with really high end damping materials and a really nice design where all, alternating surfaces are damped and the other surface is left live. Um, and whoever buys these can, can pop the back panels off and, and make any adjustments they want to make. You know, you run your own frequency response analysis and uh, whether you use a sub or not, how close to the wall they are, how big the room is, how far your, your listening position is away from the speakers, all that's gonna change uh, the details. But, um, you know, I've had $10,000 Martin Logan uh, electrostatics 
I've got um, you know Atom studio monitors. I've got a whole ton. I used to have acoustic research stuff when I was a younger guy. Um, even ADS, bronze speakers from Europe. Um, you name it, I've probably listened to it. Um, and you know, every speaker's got a different sound signature and characteristic. I've got a set of eight thousand dollar stack headphones over there that if you want to listen to those they sound incredibly detailed almost too detailed um, these are not quite like an electrostatic where you've got that like fine detail at the very top end but they've got a sense of presence in the room that uh, you you just don't get with any other speaker these things have such a commanding sense of presence and honestly the, you know, the way that these are set up, they're set up so that your listening height is right at, at the coax midpoint here uh, for your ears. And um, it's like wearing headphones, except like massive headphones. So an amazing, one of a kind listening experience with these. Now, why am I selling them? Well, I'm gonna be uh, moving and uh, they're, they're not gonna fit uh, where I'm moving to. So um, someone that's got the room, they're not, they're not super large, they're, 18 inches wide and they're 22 inches deep and 54 inches high um, and they weigh you know 120 pounds or something each but um, they're relatively compact for 604 most 604 monitors are, are bulky and square and I built this leaner so that they're more usable and more 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 possible spaces um, I plan on shipping them in custom um, plywood crates that are foam lined um, and the approximate shipping cost uh, pretty much anywhere in North America is probably five or six hundred uh, dollars so um, it is what it is they the um, you want these things to to arrive to the new owners um, with no damage and they're beautiful perfect cabinets right now and they probably had about 70 hours maybe 80 hours worth of listening time so the speakers are broken in but they're certainly not well used i'm also going to sell the the tube app because i'm going to switch to a pair of self-powered head monitors hedd monitors from the uk and they have built-in triamplification so i won't need the uh, the tryout app uh, any longer either so anyway i live in vancouver bc canada and if anybody's local or is somewhere up and down the coast of, um, you know, between here and, and Oregon, we can probably get to, get in person together, but otherwise they would be uh, sent remotely. And, um, you know, people sometimes ask, where do you, where's the best position for the base uh, reflex ports? And just keep in mind that at, um, you know, between 30 and 80 hertz, the wavelength of, of, a, of a sound wave is the length of this room, <laughs> or larger. Uh, and so moving a port up and down a few inches or positioning on the front of the speaker versus the back of the speaker, you're wasting your time because the, the wave is, is, is some huge multiple of that distance, so it's not gonna make any difference. Um, just the amount of damping. If you put more damping in, you control the speaker more, it's gonna tighten up the sound of the speaker a bit more, but you're gonna just softly roll off and suck up some of the energy in the bass. So you can play with that amount of damping depending on what your listening environment is like, and you can increase or decrease the amount of bass. Again, do you have a subwoofer, that kind of thing. So love these speakers. It's been uh, four years with them, and I think a new owner will be thrilled. I don't think there's a finer set of 604s um, out there. I'm really, really proud of what has been created here. Beautiful, well-built cabinets, beautifully braced inside, and uh, the latest 604 um, drivers themselves, and a really thoughtfully designed, high-quality um, passive crossover. And uh, yeah, so it's, it's, um, it's hopefully gonna find a new home uh, for somebody soon. Thank you. Sorry for the yellow light, it's the fluorescence. Um, so these are the new Altic Lansing or Great Plains Audio 604-8H3 cabinets. And uh, I'll just sort of show you, so that the idea is it's a nine cubic foot enclosure. 
it's 18 inches wide, 20 inches deep, 55 inches high, and uh, two round 4 inch ports or 3.8 inch diameter ports that are 4.4 inches long. And the inside is braced side to side and front to back. Um, this top brace is to support the back of the speaker, the, uh, this, this frame down here. And um, in conjunction with the um, angled uh, plate on the back, we have several other angled plates to break up standing waves. And then there's different types of there's sonic barrier, 1.25 inch um, insulation, plus some regular foam and some fiber insulation that I'm going to put in different places. And Anyway, I'm trying to put this thing together right now. And um, these two crossovers here, so this is the stock. Great Plains Audio Altec crossover, and this is the one that Rick uh, Sahali has uh, built for me. He's a bit of an, an expert in uh, the uh, audio business with improved voicing, so I've tried these before with the 604s in another cabinet. I know what they sound like and look like and frequency response, so I'll plug this hand, you know, it's just a soldered point to point on the back of that. Uh, uh, or wooden board, but uh, it should be interesting to see um, what the different characteristics are and how it sounds. So here's the semi-completed phase of the um, a driver installed, I guess. And um, so yeah, I used um, the T-bolts at the back. You can see them in the cabinet there. 1032 stainless hardware. I may paint it black. Um, although the silver color is actually kind of a neat little industrial look to it. I'm trying to make these things look industrial. So basically there's the insides and um, the way it's mounted, the driver, and supported at the back. And I'm now going to uh, mount the crossover which I've covered in uh, uh, foam goop, the uh, insulation foam. It's just so nothing rattles and it doesn't bounce reflections off all the parts and I'll mount those and then I'll um, do the um, damping material and then I'm uh, getting close to finishing it up. So here are the speakers, they're done. Um, the general theme is the heavy sonic barrier which is medium gauge foam, light gauge foam, heavy heavy elastomer foam at the base. So using that on each of the wedges, um, having light filler, poly filler behind the wedges and then um, lighter foam at the top and some of the sides and uh, you know keeping the um, the damping and the critical area around the, um, the speaker such that we're not getting reflected waves uh, hitting the cone but generally live one side dead the other maybe a little bit biased towards damp heavier damping um, but uh, I try not to over damp it so and then the front it's looking good as well. So, yeah, they're um, they're just about ready to be pushed into place.